The U.S. has met President Biden's goal of administering 100 million coronavirus shots in his first 100 days. Friday marked the administration's 59th day in office. That means the goal was reached nearly 40 days early. So far, more than 41 million people have been fully vaccinated against the virus. More than 77 million people have received at least one dose. And in another major development, the CDC revised its recommendation for physical distancing in schools Friday, a move that could allow more classes to resume in-person learning. Nikki Batiste reports from New York City. Tonight, the CDC making a change that could get more kids back in class, issuing new guidance saying students can sit closer together without partitions. I want to emphasize that these recommendations are specific to students in classrooms with universal mask wearing. The agency now saying students can be as close as three feet apart instead of six, with the only exceptions being those in middle and high schools in high COVID transmission communities. The six feet recommendation still applies to teachers and in school lunchrooms and lobbies. We owe you a gigantic debt of gratitude. Today, President Biden visited the CDC headquarters in Atlanta as he marked a milestone, reaching his goal of 100 million COVID vaccination shots more than a month before the target date. You are the Army. You're the Navy. You're the Marines. You're the Coast Guard. I really mean it. This is a war. And you are the frontline troops. Meanwhile, the first vaccine trial for pregnant women is underway. Right, just relax your arm. Okay. Kelsey Carpenter is rolling up her sleeve for a shot at protection for her and her unborn child. She's one of about 4,000 women participating in the Pfizer study. Are you worried at all or are you happy you're doing this? I'm happy I'm doing this. I would be totally off base if I said I wasn't a little nervous. The trial not only looking at vaccine safety and efficacy for pregnant women, but also whether COVID antibodies could transfer to newborns who will be monitored for six months after birth. That's what sold me on it. Like, okay, this could help my daughter. This can keep me safe. And tonight, a small preliminary study suggests babies can also be protected from COVID by vaccine antibodies in breast milk. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, New York. Dr. Susanna Hills joins me now. She's a pediatric airway surgeon and a professor of head and neck surgery at Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons. Doctor, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. The Biden administration, as we said, surpassed its goal of 100 million coronavirus shots since Inauguration Day on Friday. What do you see as the biggest strengths in our vaccination efforts? And do you think there's room for improvement? We have to acknowledge first that tremendous success. Um, you're 100, vaccina 100 million vaccinations, far under his goal deadline of 100 days in office. Um, what an accomplishment, and, and that's great news. Having three vaccines now available in the United States is something that I think none of us could have imagined was possible a year ago. So um, that is, is a tremendous accomplishment, too, that we need to acknowledge. Um, and and it can't be understated. We're still working as hard as we can to get these vaccines out and to get them into arms because you have to keep in mind that only 12% of the American public is vaccinated at this point. So there are a, a large number of people, the vast majority of Americans have not yet been vaccinated and don't have protection. Um, so we're working as hard as we can at our own sites here in New York City. The federal government has opened up FEMA sites, which are incredibly helpful in vaccine distribution. There have been tremendous efforts through academic hospitals and community organizations here in New York and throughout the country in disseminating education um, and getting the right education to folks who may not have access to vaccines. So all of these things are helping. Um, and I think in the meantime, while we're waiting for the majority of Americans to be protected, we've got to do our best to remember the public health measures that protect us while we're waiting to get everyone protected. Well, at a hearing Thursday, Senator Rand Paul said the key to getting rid of vaccine hesitancy is to, quote, quit wearing your mask after getting vaccinated. Dr. Anthony Fauci said he's, quote, dead wrong. What is the importance of continuing to wear masks, doctor? And what do you think is the key to stopping vaccine hesitancy? I think 
that what Rand Paul said um, in such a public venue was a huge disservice, not only to his constituents, but to the American people. One of the most important things that we need to do, particularly the federal government and people in leadership positions, is to disseminate accurate appropriate information. And so disseminating disinformation like that, what a disservice. Um, clearly, we know all the data we have suggests that vaccinations are not 100 percent effective. That means that there are people who are vaccinated who are still going to get infected and can transmit the virus. We have a very low number still, a low percentage still of people who are fully vaccinated. That will change, but people are at risk. And the one thing we know that works that is extremely effective in preventing spread of this virus is mask wearing in conjunction with layered protection like social distancing, hand washing, and those other protective measures we use. So mask wearing is critical. Suggesting that it's not critical or that it's theatrics is um, just incredibly irresponsible. And, uh, and I think we need to push back against that and reassure people that masks certainly are essential still particularly as we start to reopen things. And across the country, states are reopening um, restaurants, outdoor venues, schools are reopening. So we've got to double down on those measures as we open up more and more. Well, more than a dozen states are seeing a rise in cases. Dr. Fauci says this is, quote, not surprising, but should people be concerned? I think it is concerning. Yes, I'm concerned. We see in Europe now, Italy is under complete lockdown. Regions in France are being locked down. Germany is consider, considering locking down. And throughout this pandemic, the United States has to, to, time and time again lagged a couple of weeks behind what's going on in Europe. So we can expect to see if history shows as it has throughout this pandemic that our case numbers may very well rise in the coming weeks. And that makes sense because we know that we're having an increase in our number of variant strain cases here throughout the United States as well. The question right now is how quickly can we get folks vaccinated versus how quickly um, will case numbers rise? What I would like to see, what I think is essential to see is states reconsidering some of these reopening guidelines and maybe pressing pause. Um, Michigan recently had this past week a 30% increase in the number of positive cases that it reported. And today they opened 20% capacity for outdoor venues and for stadiums. Here in New York, today we're opening um, restaurant capacity even more than we have before 50% in New York City. So, and, and that's something that's happening across the country. We have 17 states without mask mandates right now. So I think we need to, we don't have to necessarily stop our, our steps moving forward. I think um, right now with the vaccination program going so well, we can look forward to slowly reopening. I think going back to school is critical, but I'd like to see states as they're monitoring their case numbers and seeing them increase, press pause and reconsider some of these reopening measures that they're planning for. Well, the CDC updated its guidance for schools Friday. It allows for students to be spaced three feet apart instead of six. And on Thursday, the agency's director called this an urgent issue. Why is that, doctor? And are there circumstances where three feet might not be enough? One of the, the major effects of this virus has certainly been on our young people and um, on the the setbacks in being able to be in in-person learning and in school. So it is, it's incredibly important to try to get our, our young people back to school. Um, I think that these guidelines are acknowledging that our vaccination program is moving forward, that children, um, although they absolutely are susceptible and can get sick, that children are different than adults, and they generally experience significantly less frequent cases of disease and less severe disease. So going back to school, and particularly for the younger set of kids, decreasing the social distancing to three feet to allow more and more young people to be in the classroom does make sense. We also know from looking at schools that were open back in the fall um, in North Carolina and in other states uh, that were reopened where we have data on infections and 
and uh, infections coming from schools, that schools that really adhered to mask wearing had incredibly low rates of infection. And I think that that's incredibly valuable information if we adhere to masking in schools. I think giving a little bit with the social distancing makes a lot of sense. It's a little bit different with the older kids, with the kids who are in high school, because they tend to respond more like adults with disease. They're a little bit higher risk. And so I think it makes a lot of sense that the CDC recommended three feet for middle and high school if they have low rates of community transition. But as those numbers increase in communities, to increase then the distance back to six feet, which we know to be a bit safer. All right, Dr. Susanna Hills. Doctor, thank you very much. You bet.